all right welcome back now in this particular video we're going to see how we're going to choose our k right remember that in the previous video we actually chose the k randomly right we just we just say that our k is supposed to be five right but in this case we're going to see how we can choose our k right you're going to see how we can choose our k so um let's let's um try and then do something here and then we we'll see how we're going to choose our k okay we we'll see how we can choose our k okay now um i'm going to use this cross vowel score right i'm going to use this cross vowel score now uh in in, in sklearn right in sklearn we have what is called the model selection right we have what is called the model selection then in model selection i'm using what is called the cross vowel score right and then um if we come here i'm setting uh an empty list right so scores underscore one right i'm setting an empty list over here so that later on i'll be putting some scores inside there right i'll be putting some scores inside there now what is happening that i um, mean here is that um early on i just chose my k to be five right randomly i said that my k should be five right i just i just chose my k to be five now i'm going to choose several keys right i'm going to choose several keys all the way from one to um 250 right so k equals one right k equals one k equals um two k equals three k equals four right k equals five all the way to k equals 50. so i'm going to do that i'm going to uh, i'm going to actually do that right instead of just choose k equals five and then see which k is doing better whether k equals one is the one doing better or whether k equals five is the one doing better or whether k equals say 15 is the one doing better or i don't i don't actually know so i want to choose um uh, this this kind of a range right so that i'll be able to um see which k is doing better all right that's what i'm going to do um down here all right that's what i'm going to do so let's see how we're going to do that now i'm using this for for loop over here right all right i'm using this for a loop over here then i'm setting a range of 1 to 50 as you can see here 1 to 50 and obviously it's actually going to be from 1 to 49 because um normally the last part will not will not come okay so that is that is basically what i'm going to do over here i'm setting a range from 1 to 50 and then i'm building the same algorithm just like we built earlier on right i'm initializing it over here right i'm initializing it over here so you can see that we have k and n um underscore two because earlier on we did k and n equals um k nearest classifier right so if i show you up here all right when we built the first algorithm right over here all right you can see that we we build where we store everything in the variable called k and n right and then we initialize it the same way so that's that's the same thing that i'm going to do right when you come down here it's just the same thing that i'm i'm doing over here all right let me actually get rid of this okay so it's just the same thing that i'm doing here i'm just initializing it right just like i did earlier on right so in this case instead of saying that um my number of neighbors which is k equals five just like we did earlier on randomly in this case i'm saying that my number of neighbors equals i which i is any value ranging from 1 to 50 right remember that i'm saying that for i in this range right so i is any value which comes between 1 and then 50 right that's that's basically what i'm putting over here okay then i'm setting a score and i mean score underscore two over here then i'm using this cross vowel score right i'm using this cross vowel score over here okay then i'm passing in this okay i'm passing in um let me change this one i'm passing in this this k and then two right so remember that i created this k and then two right um let me actually use this one okay i i created this k and then two so i'm passing that one inside here okay then my sq underscore df right remember that earlier on we created our sq underscore df okay then i have my y which is my target variable which we created everything right so what we've i mean from from the previous video we created these strands over here now what i'm going to use is um the cv over here cv um equals 10 right which means that i'm going to do this iteratively 10 times right iteratively 10 times that's what i'm going to do right so uh, each time that i'll do i'll measure i'll measure the score right and everything is going to be stored in this score underscore two right so 10 times i'll get 10 different scores and i'll store everything here i store everything in the score underscore I mean score underscore two right and that's what i'm going to do then um after after that is done after that is done for each of the iterative right if i do uh iterative one remember that i'm saying that i'm going to do it for 10 times so if i do iterative 10 uh, iterative one right i'm going to get 10 different um scores i'm going to get 10 different scores i'm going to get 10 different scores now each of these um, i'm going to find the mean of this right this is just for iteration one right i'm going to find the mean of this 
right? Then if I find the mean of that, I put it in that. I put it in this empty score. The, uh, this um, scores underscore one, this is an empty list, right? Then that's what is going to happen here. I'm appending the mean of that in that. So if I pick, say, um, iterative two, right? That is second iteration, right? I'm going to have different, different, different scores, right? So I find the mean of this one too. I find the mean of that. That is the dot mean. I find the mean of this one too. Then I put it inside. So I do it like that for for 10 different iterations. And I'm going to, since I have this i equals this one, right? If I check, if I check this one, let me let me actually show you. Let me actually show you what is happening there, right? So if I if I show you what is going to be inside this, right? If I run this, now you see that I have I have 10 different um I have 10 different scores. I have 10 different scores over here, right? So this, this, I mean, we find the mean of this. We find the mean of this. We find the mean of this. Then we put it in that, right? Then we put it in this one. So for one to say one to fifty, which is going to be one to forty-nine, um, different, different, um, different case that we are using here, right? If I will do it for that for that long, so if I see how many that I will get in this, right? How many that I will put in that, right? How many that I will put in that? Let me show you the output of this, right? After I append everything, right? I, after I append everything in this, that is after I put everything inside this, right? Let me just show you um, what we are going to actually have over here, right? So if I show you this, now you see that, you see how many we have, right? If you see, we have different, different of them. Each one of these, right, is a mean. Each one of these is a mean of a single iteration that we did, right? Each one of these is a mean of single. So if we take the first one, right? If we take this first one, this is a mean of, all these accuracies that I got when I did the first iteration, okay? Each of that is, is like that, okay? So if I check the length of this, if I check the length of this one, right? If I check the length of this one, you see that we have 49. So you can see that that's the range that we have in here, right? So we do we do it that number of times, right? For each for each of the 10, I mean, each, each of the iterations that I do, I find the mean of that, right? So I'll do it for, for this number of times, then I'll put it back inside here. I put it everything in the score, scores underscore one, I put it in there, right? So that's what I'm doing because I later on I'll be needing that, right? I'll be needing that so that I'll need, I'll know, I mean, the scores that I have. I'll know the scores that I have. So um, what I'm going to do over here, right? Let me show you the output that we are going to work with, right? Let me show you the output alongside. Okay. So what I'm doing here is that I'm setting the figure size, right? Which is plt dot, um, plt dot figure plt.figure and then inside that right inside plt.figure you can see that we have fixed size to be 10 and then um 10 and i mean 20 and then 10 right so that is nothing but the length over here should be 20 and then the width over here right the width should be um 10 that is basically what is happening here then uh, i'm passing i'm going to use plot right just just a normal plot over here and then i'm passing in my range which is one from 1 to 50 right just like what i did over here that's the range Right, so that's the range that I'm going to get over here. Right, I'm passing that one in, and then the scores underscore one. Right, so that's that's what I after I appended all the scores in what is in, the, in, the, in this empty list. Right, in this empty list, that's what I'm going to pass in. Right, so that's what you can actually see over here. Right, scores underscore one. That's what you can see over here. Right, so it's just the same thing that you you saw over here. Right, that we appended. Now after that is done. Right, after that is done. I'm setting color equals blue, right? Color equals blue is nothing but the text that you can see. This this um dash dash that you can see over here, right? Is what you can actually um that's that's basically what what I'm setting the color. And I'm saying that it should be dashed, right? And that's why you're seeing dash and not just I'm in mean, a straight line, right? That's why you can see the dash over here. All right, so basically that is that is um, what that is what I'm doing. That is what I'm doing over here. Let me just even do it this way so that you can actually see. All right, so. The dashed are the dash dash lines that you can see. These dash lines, right? These dash lines that you can actually see is nothing but this. And then the blue is the color of the dash lines, right? And then this uh, marker here is what you can see over there. And then the red is, is how I've been able to paint this red over here. And then the size, right? The size of the marker, right? That is the marker size should be 10, right? And that's what you can actually see. so all these are um, parameters that you can actually change all these are parameters that you can actually change the most important here is the most important thing here is this these two right my scores um scores underscore one and then my range right that's the most important thing here the colors and everything you can just change them 
okay and then over here i'm setting the title right that's um accuracy rate versus k k values and that's what you can see over here right and then i'm giving my x level so if i'm if i scroll down i'll show you that and then the y label should be accuracy and that's what you can see over here okay so basically that is that's the code right that is the code now let's see what this one is actually telling us right this let's see what this one is actually telling us so um this is the key that i said i'll show you okay now what this one is actually telling us is that if you see um as we increase the key as we increase the key from one remember that we started from one all the way to see um 49 right so it's going, actually going to be 49 over here right 49 so we gave a range of 1 to 50 but it's always one less than the last one okay so if we see this one right let me actually change this now we see that as we increase as as we we, we increase our as we increase our k right so remember that we have k from 1 to uh, 50 just like i just said so as we increase the k you can see that the accuracy right so this one is the accuracy that we're getting Right, that's the accuracy that we're getting that we store it in a, in a, I mean um, scores underscore one right remember that we store all as our accuracy in what is called scores underscore one right so that is the accuracy that we've plotted over here right that's the accuracy and this is our range okay so as we increase our range right as we increase our range you can see that the accuracy were increasing right somehow it falls it falls and then it goes up right and you can see that this is where we got the highest accuracy Right, so maybe around um around ninety seven, right? That's where we got the highest accuracy. After that, after that, all the others, right? The accuracy started dropping, right? The accuracy started dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. So if you choose the k to be very high, right? If you choose our k, that is the number of neighbors to be very high. You can see that we will have less accuracy, right? In this case, we can see that we have had less accuracy. So maybe our k should be between maybe um maybe thirteen to I mean um somewhere here, right? maybe like this right so if you choose our key to be um between something like this maybe um maybe eight or something like that maybe eight and then 13 which should be good right and then um maybe what is what is actually going to be very good for us is if we're able to choose the k for k, k to be say 10 right 10 or 9 something like that so that would be the perfect k that we are supposed to actually use right that would be the perfect k for us all right now apart from that right apart from that um if you choose the k to be very less right it means that we're still having the opportunity to increase our k so that our accuracy will increase right so if we choose the k to be say two right to be say two we still have not reached the highest accuracy if we choose even the case to be say three right it will still be here so which means that we still have the chance to go more if we choose the k to be say um five it means that we still have the chance to go more so choosing the k to be very less it's not good right and choosing it to be very high is not going to help us right so in this example right choosing the k between um this is actually going to help us so instead of us um earlier on we chose the k to be say five right that was randomly we chose it to be five now let's consider the k let's choose a different k maybe a k to be say 10 right and then and then build it again and see if our crazy is going to improve remember that when we choose the k to be five right when we choose the k to be five we got this accuracy right we got this accuracy accuracy of 96 right that's what we got 96 percent no so now let's start and then uh since we have now seen um where our case should be right now let's see um let's 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 build it again and then see how it's going to help us so i'm going to do the same thing that we did the same thing that we did here right when we're building the algorithm at first right i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to do the same thing again right and then build it again but at this time i'm not going to use k equals two right um if we go a little bit up i mean k equals five right i'm not going to use that right um let me go a little yeah i'm not going to use k equals five right now i know where to to choose if i choose k equals five i still have a chance to oh, i mean increase my 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 accuracy so i'm going to choose k equals 10 right and after 10 i mean i mean after 10 or maybe 13 all the keys that i'll choose will make my accuracy come down so i'm not going to do that so i'm going to choose my key to be say um 10 okay i'm going to choose that now i choose that then i fit it again on my x train my y train so just the same process again right just the same process again now let's check the score again now you see that it, the score has increased to 97 right earlier on when we choose the key to be five right we got the score to be 96 right and now you can see that when we choose the k to be 10 right we choose the k to be 10 now our accuracy has increased to 97 okay our accuracy has increased to 97 now 
let's say that we choose the k to be very high to save to be say 50 right earlier on we choose it to be very less which was five and then we choose it to be moderate which was 10 which was doing well now let's choose it to be very high let's say k equals 50 right if we do that right if we do that and fit it again right and fit it again and check the score again now you can see that the accuracy is now reducing 95 right we are having 95 percent so you can actually see that it's actually reducing if you choose the k to be very high it's going to be reduced right so um you need to actually know which kind of k to choose right to know which kind of k to choose right you can actually um build the same confusion mattress again and then see how well it's actually going to do for you right so you can just copy the same the same code over here right just bring the same thing down here and then see how it is actually going to do for you all right see how i mean the the wrong classification might reduce if you use this one right if you use k equals 10 right this one is supposed to reduce right this one is supposed to reduce and even this one is supposed to reduce okay if you choose the k to be um to be to be 10 right you're supposed to improve more right so you're supposed to actually do better than this two in a row okay so i'll leave that one to you for you to I try it and definitely supposed to reduce if you use k equals 10 right and you can even use k equals 50 again to see if it is actually going to i mean the errors are going to increase right so if you use the k to be very large these errors are supposed to be increased right these errors that we're making are supposed to be increased but if you use k equals somewhere 10 these errors are supposed to reduce okay so choosing a better k is actually going to help you and i mean i'll leave that one to you here try the confusion matrix okay so i know by now you understand how to choose the k and i uh, i mean it's going to actually help you as as we progress right choosing the k is quite critical as we we discuss here the k you choose is actually going to have an impact on where you're going to assign your i mean your, your value so if amazon say that um if amazon choose a wrong k which means that when someone search for um iphone right they are going to show instead of them showing other iphones so that if the person is not interested in the one the person clicked on they can actually have another choice to choose a different iphone right because that's what you're interested in right so if they have a wrong k then it means that they are going to have wrong um wrong wrong um i mean predictions right that if someone search for say iphone they're going to predict maybe um baby clothes to them because they don't actually um know which one is closer to 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 iphone right instead of um classifying iphones with other iphones okay so that's that's something that you need to take note of when you're choosing your kit okay so i hope you have an idea and intuition about how to do this all right so see you in the next um the next class have a nice day